Welcome to day 30, where we're going to look at F strings. The F stands for format, not whatever you thought it was. So, format strings, F strings, are the newest way in Python of outputting variables and text together. And honestly, everything we've done before, therefore, has been really awkward as a result. F strings allow you to write entire paragraphs of text and explicitly state where you want the variables to go and in what order. And we can even do some simple things like left and right text alignment that we couldn't do before at all. So in any program where we're going to take data from our user, store them in variables, and then concatenate them with the text in a print statement, it can start to get quite confusing. Take a look at this example, where we've got Katie, who's 28 and uses she, her pronouns. Now, when we concatenate that into a sentence, the amount of commas that we're using and the breaking between the text and the variables does get confusing. And I'll hold my hand up. I've made many mistakes over the years where I've been trying to include a variable and I've put it in speech marks. Or worse, is doing the opposite, where I want to bring a variable in which shouldn't have speech marks over it and I've left them in. F strings remove that problem completely. So let's see how that works. So the key to F strings is making it easier to write the actual copy of the text. In quotes, we can write our full sentence and whenever we want to pop a variable in, we just use two curly braces next to each other. And that's a placeholder. That represents the variable we're gonna put in. Immediately after the string, we're gonna do dot format, which is what the F string stands for. In those brackets, we're gonna list the variables in the order that we want them to appear. So in this case, name, pronouns, and age. And if I run it, well, not a lot's gonna happen because I'm still missing that really important operator, which is the print command. Now, to a lot of people, they look at this and go, I, I don't see why that's easier than the previous one. And the answer is, there's just so much more you can do to this than with normal print statements and concatenation. F strings, for a start, allow you to simplify the way that you're writing the text. You can write the entire full sentence and put placeholders in. It also allows you to talk about multiple variables that have to break your train of thought. But let's have a look at some of the other things we can do. So one of the things we can do is set local variables within the F string itself. And here, it feels a bit redundant because I've said name is name, pronouns are pronouns, and age is age. But have a look at those curly braces. Now, it doesn't matter the order that I mention those variables in the format brackets. In fact, I can now start reusing things. And so without having to consistently restate these variables in the order, as we would have done before, I can just say, look, the name is this, the age is this, the pronouns are this, and keep reusing them in the text as much as I want, and it will just replace curly brace variable name with what I've defined in those brackets. It also works with different variable types, including ints, floats, and strings. And that means that we get a special power that we didn't get before. And that is, we can now assign concatenated sentences to variables. So, in this case, I've made a variable called response, and I've made it equal to a concatenated sentence, which combines together a bunch of variables and text together. And I could print that out, or I could do other stuff to it. You cannot do that with the comma syntax for joining things together. The only way to do that, aside from F strings, is by a really convoluted and complicated amount of casting in line, which looks horrendous. We now have the ability to create a unique text string and assign it to a variable which can be passed to other places. And this is really powerful. We can even use this little superpower, which is instead of all that faffing about, I can just use F before any string and use the curly brace variable name syntax 
that references variables that are already active in my code. So because I've already set the values of name, age, and pronouns before I create the string, I then don't need to do that dot .format business at the end. This makes it very, very easy to write concatenated sentences anywhere in your code. F quotes, and then use your F string syntax. You can even use this syntax with the triple quote trick to have multiple lines of text. That means if your variables change and you click run, you get different output without having to change really complex values. And actually, the code is really readable, much more understandable than it was before. Okay, one other thing you can do is change the way in which the text is aligned. Now, this is not quite as simple as I've made it sound up front. What you can actually do is for any variable that you concatenate inside an F string, you can say, you have this many characters as a box, and within that box, I want you to be left, right, or center aligned. That might seem a bit weird, but it works out really, really well if we're printing out big lists of data. In this example here, I've written a program to count the amount of days of code work we've done so far. And I want that printed out as a series of headings. The problem with this is, because the amount of days increases from one digit to two digit, it looks a little off here. When we get past day nine, the entire second part of the sentence is pushed off to the right a little bit, and that makes it a little bit yackier to look at. Well, let's fix that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put next to the variable a colon, just so we can give it a few more instructions. And I'm gonna say that I want it to be left aligned, and I want to give it two characters to be spaced in. And if I run it this time, you can see there that the words all line up now, but I've set, I've set aside two spaces for the number. Now, of course, this isn't gonna work when we hit 100, so let's make that three characters long and left aligned. Don't like it? Let's see if we can center align it. Which you may be a little happier with. Okay, common problems with f-strings, and there's only really one common problem, and that's this. Hmm, I'm literally printing out the curly brace and the variable name. And the reason for that should be quite obvious. We've just missed the f from before the string. Once we add that into it, it pulls the variable in. And just remember, there are two ways of fixing that. If you want to use standard text, you need to use dot .format, and then in the brackets, specify the variables and the order they're going to happen. In this case, I need to say that the variable I've specified as i is actually i from the main code as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. We could call that count. And in this case, I'd say count in my code equals i, and it works perfectly well. You need to be careful that f strings either have f in front of them or dot .format after them for them to work properly. Otherwise, you're going to be confusing your poor users with a bunch of nonsense. Once again, there's some code with a little bit of an error in it. If you'd like to go and fix that for me, pretty please, please. Your challenge today is that you're gonna build a program that uses a loop to ask the user what they thought of each of the 30 days of challenges so far. But I also want under each one, you to prompt the user for what they thought of it and then show it to them in a full sentence, center aligned underneath the heading. Once again, please do share this with us in the community, publish it or publish it on social media and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to make sure we get eyes on it. Tomorrow is a challenge where we're gonna start using F strings in more advanced and exciting ways.